<laughs> Good morning, everyone, on this fine spring morning. Uh, it's not as sunny this morning as it was yesterday, but at the same time, spring is here. Is that spring with you, yeah. Pat? Shared spring? Yeah, the, the, the lawn got cut on Saturday, if, I think it's the second time, and the grass was actually growing quite heavily, so uh, spring is definitely here. So, Pat, when you say the lawn was cut, do you mean that you had a third party who entered and did the cutting? I was hoping you weren't going to ask that. Yes. <laughs> well, that's very odd now, Pat, because I think we may be twin souls because exactly the same thing happened here. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can I can back from somewhere. And I can cut it myself after this, but see the first cut, you know, after the winter, uh, yeah, you know, you would need, uh, it takes about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, and the, the, the guy come uh, on Saturday, he's a sit-on lawnmower and he can do it. Uh, I've got one of them push sort of, you know, uh, petrol mowers. Yes, but see yes. the first cut, yeah. Uh, do you, you remember that song, The First Cut is the Deepest? I uh, Rod Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, okay. So let's go on. Uh, there was an item on the Nolan show this morning, Pat, that uh, I heard a bit of, but you heard more, I think. And uh, you're quite uh, struck by it. Do you want to tell us about it? No, Jude, I didn't catch it. I saw a wee bit of it last night on the news. There's a Jewish guy claiming that on Saturday, and like on the basis of that he, he, he had an, uh, what would you say, a bit of an altercation, I think is the right word, with a, uh, a metropolitan policeman on Saturday. On the surface, it seems quite legitimate what he was saying. He said he was out walking and uh, there was a protest march about the war in Gaza. Mm. And he went across the street and this guy, uh, um, Cop wouldn't let him. He said, basically, you're you're open, you're openly Jewish, and you shouldn't be going across there. And the guy says, like, uh, no, it's freedom of speech. I should be entitled to go where I want, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you, you know, someone on on the surface, you would say, absolutely, one hundred percent right. Mm. Except I start to think about it. Uh, there's a, a, something struck me is wait a minute, is this guy as innocent as he appearing? He knows there's a big march. He's wearing his kippa or whatever you call it. He decides to go across. Now, Jude, the thought occurred to me, the reason I, I sort of said afterwards, there was two things. Right, there was an orange march going through Porta Down on mm. Saturday last. Yeah. And two or three guys with uh, uh, Republican sort of jumpers on them or GA jumpers saying, totally walk across that street in front of me and all that. The cop would say, right, no, it's on Winneman. That's likely to lead to a breach of the peace. And for your own safety, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the cop would probably, you know, he might get a bit of a uh, flack for it, but he would probably would be doing the right thing. But this guy was demanding to march across uh, to march across uh, while this thing was going on. That was the first thing. But secondly, Jude, right away, it's all the stuff that was engineered because already he's got up the whole thing that uh, Sir Mark Rowley, that the... the uh, Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police should be uh, is calling for him to resign. Et cetera. So it, and 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 as well as that, during his, his thing with Nolan, he's calling for these marches to be banned. There's something about it that strikes me. Was it a structured setup that he knew this was going to happen and it was filmed and so on? And it, 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 I thought it was unbelievable. He was sort of saying that these uh, these anti sort of uh, Israeli marches should be banned. Mm. Of, and he said, "There's no absolute right and all the rest of it." Ah, yeah, so, yeah. Just, just, just yeah, the front occurred to me. Wait a minute, hey, there's a war. There's thirty, nearly thirty-five thousand people killed in uh, Gaza. There's seventy thousand injured. The place is obliterated. There are people starving. There's two point million or two point two million almost displaced. And this guy's saying he's coming out. There should be no anti-Israeli marches. <laughs> just, to me, was there another agenda at play here? Oh, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I suspect it was. But uh, I mean, I, I think there's two points in it, I think, actually, apart from the way you talk about it. One is that this guy thought it was OK to, you know, go uh, with his little skullcap uh, and clearly a Jewish man yeah, and, uh, 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 to a demonstration where uh, there were you know, feelings are running very high about the deaths oh, yeah. of the Palestinians. So, and he's insisting on his right. I, I think the cops were right to stop him. Of where I think he sees a chink where he could uh, um, complain would be that the guy said, you're uh, obviously, was it obviously Jewish? What was the, what was the uh, adverb? Oh, you're there? too Jewish. Uh, long line, like you're obviously Jewish or you're too obviously Jewish. Obviously Jewish. Evidently Jewish. Okay. But I mean, that, that is the fact of the matter. It's like you said, uh, if it was a guy wearing a GAA top, 
uh, you would be seen as being evidently GAA, Catholics, nationalists, etc. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I take the point, Pat. It's that trick of being able to portray yourself as the victim rather than the aggressor. The truth of the matter is that the state that he, that guy, probably supports, Israel, has engaged in genocide. Full stop. And for him to complain that he's a victim and to call on to call on the superintendent or the, the boss of the chief constable of the Metropolitan Police to resign? I mean, yeah. I would crazy. I mean, this is a this is know, he's already got a, a, he's already got an apology from the commissioner, uh, Sir Mark Rowley. He he's also got a, he's also got a, an apology from uh, Rishi Sunak. I said so and, and, and you can bet your life that the Daily Mail, the Daily Telegraph the Daily Express and all the rest will be saying, is this what Britain is coming to, and et cetera, et cetera, where good Jewish law-abiding people can... Whereas maybe the, uh, where me and you uh, looking at... Uh, we don't see it on the view of the uh, the colonizer or whatever. We see it on the view of the oppressed. And, yeah. and the oppressed people, I would say, are the Palestinians. Well, and I, I, Jude, I, I got... Well, the, uh, the more the interview went on with Nolan this morning, I said, this guy's got another agenda. No, I don't think it was as innocent he was making out that he just happened to be walking down the street and wanted to cross the road. Uh, the, the fact that he's already got a uh, this petition up to you, for Sir Mark Riley, and it's got 6,000 signatures, the fact that it seems to be all sort of planned, and he's all, uh, he's got it all worked out. I, I, I know this didn't strike me as just an innocent man walking down the street and then this happened to him. You know, I could be wrong, but uh, I, I, I know. I, I, I got yeah. suspicious. I, I, I'm just thinking about what you said, this evidently Jewish... I suspect that what he is implying or his complaint is, is that the guy is saying, I look at you and I can see your Jewish features rather yeah. than this little cap in his head. And you could see yeah. how that might be seen as insulting. You look Jewish. You're, you've got a yeah. Jewish features. Uh, that said, be... I, would support his, I, I would support his right totally to march through the streets, or not march, walk the streets of London where he lives, pays his tax, and he's a law-abiding citizen. Don't they agree that that should, and the cops should no right to say to him, no, you're too evidently Jewish, on its own. But put it in context. Yeah. Here's a yeah. march, uh -huh. and, a, and a, a guy wants wants to cross a street where these people are marching. And so, and the, the cop is made out to be the bad guy, because, dude, I think of the cop, and then he, right, the alternative, dude, say the cop had allowed the guy to walk yeah. across, and he got the, the bejesus kicked out of him, Oh, you know, what well, they said, oh, the cop didn't protect them. So, you know, you know, well, in certain circumstances, it really, oh, you know, this was a march. And you can bet your life, there's a lot of people there who feel very strongly about what Israel is doing. And a Jewish guy, I would consider that provocation. Yeah, I would say if that had happened, what you said, if he got a kicking, uh, that he, after he recovered, he probably would have been do, saying the same thing, that the head of the Met will have to uh, re resign Aye, that, because he wasn't protected. given sufficient protection. <laughs> you know, yeah. No win situation. I, I, I have to hand it to the supporters of Israel. They are tremendously ingenious in their ability to tr present themselves with a straight the face as being the victim. I mean, for God's sake, what's been, what have yeah, I been Judy, watching on TV for the last six months then? Every, every, every criticism of Israel is anti-Semitic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and they said, and they're now saying, when you criticize Israel, these people are hide, hiding really, that they're hiding behind, that they're really anti-Semitic. So I, um, I know, I've read quite a lot of Jewish literature. I've, I've seen a lot of stuff. There's many, there are many, many decent Jews who are yeah. totally opposed to this. So this crap that when you uh, uh, oppose the killing of, of uh, 35,000 people, many of them women and children, the wounding of at least 75,000, you know, the obliteration or the destruction of Gaza, the attacks on hospitals and refugee centres, the starvation of people, that doesn't make you anti-Semitic. It makes you human. One of the things, I mean, we'll go on after this, but uh, one of the things that, uh, maybe I said this the last day, that the uh, Jewish state is fond of, or the Israeli state is fond of uh, uh, trumpeting, is the fact that they are the only democratic state in the Middle East. Yeah, Middle East. And that's probably yeah. true, they have these regular elections, etc. I mean, you would wonder, it's not time to call one with Netanyahu, but anyway, uh, mm -hmm. they are a, a, a democratic state. But I mean, look what they've done. You know, yeah. the the fact that you're a, a democratic state doesn't mean you're not going to act in a vile fashion. 
And I think yeah. America would consider itself a democratic state. And look at what it has done in terms of sending supplies of weaponry and tanks and gun. Hey, they passed another 60 billion they're going to give them. Uh, yeah. for, well, that's for the Ukraine. But the idea yeah. of being a supplier of weapons of death, uh, you know, you wipe your hands of it. Uh, I, I don't think that's on whether you're a democratic state or not. OK, mm. enough, enough, enough already, as they say. Um, let's go and have a word with Liz Truss, because Liz Truss, in my opinion, has violated uh, a, a sacred name in my estimation, and that is the name of Brian Luff. Have you, are you familiar with that story? Uh, I thought it was Brian read it the weekend. Yeah, she claimed, she told her private secretary that she was going to be the Brian Clough of, um, of prime oh, ministers. Like yeah, uh, she said that, that, and you know the whole implication of that did was that Brian Clough was the wrong person, that he was on the right course, and, and that the people around him. And you see, right here's the background for anybody who doesn't know. Brian Clough uh, was a super su uh, successful uh, with Derby County. He took him to the what do you call it, the uh, Premiership. Came from nowhere, and then was a uh, when Don Ravy left to uh, manage England from Leeds. Uh, the Leeds said they would go for uh, Clough. He went to Leeds and he, he told them they were a liar. They told the players like Johnny Jayles, Billy Bremner and all those, Norman Hunter and all those star players that they were cheats and they were liars and they achieved nothing. They, they were dirty sc uh, scumbags and all that sort of stuff. And the players revolted. And he, uh, Clough only lasted 44 days. Uh -huh. But he got 100,000 com uh, payment uh -huh. compensation uh -huh. back when money was money. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, he described that as I'll have to say as fuck off money because then he could sit back and wait for the, for any job he wanted. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, Truss said she, as Prime Minister, was the football or the political equivalent of Brian Clough, that she was going to be radical. She wanted to kick up the traces and she was going to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And she's told her private secretary that if she uh, only lasted whatever, she would be the Brian Clough of uh -huh. Prime Ministers. She says she lasted 49 days, he lasted 44. But the, the implication, Jude, of course, is that, uh, you know, I was a genius, an unrecognized exactly. one, and I wanted to change everything, and exactly. so on and so on. Like, it's yeah. delusional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the that's the point where it all falls apart. Fluff was a terrifically yeah. gifted manager. <laughs> Theresa, Theresa uh, whatever. Uh, Liz Truss. Liz Truss, rather. Uh, is devoid, in my opinion, of any insight in terms of being a politician. Uh, and for her to put her name alongside the lot of the divine, the sainted Brian Clough, in my book, is outrageous. Nearly as outrageous yeah. as that guy saying that he was a victim. Okay, let's uh, push on. Well, and what, let's, uh, Jude, what about uh, 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 Sir Keir Starmer? You ah, that's what I was going to talk about. Sir Keir uh, Starmer uh, yeah. says they are, uh, let's get into sound as if we're in an echo chamber here. He says the Labour candidates are to fly the flag on St George's yeah. Day. I don't know when this, when is St George's Day. I think it's next Tuesday. Is it tomorrow? So they, they're flying flags tomorrow. Does that remind you of anybody? That reminds yeah. me of. Jude, you know, Trump. Listen, I, I made the point a couple of times. There are now two Conservative parties in and Britain. Uh, the, the only difference is one uses an uppercase C. The other one calls itself the Labour Party. You know, um, you know, <laughs> it's, you it's, it's ridiculous, Jude. I would say it's and, and like. He, he's, he's saying the Labour Party is now the party of, of patriotism. Ah, oh, like, I don't know. I, like, he's gone down the exact same route yeah. as, uh, uh, as Thatcher Trump and, and Harris. And Harris. Trump, don't forget Trump, Harris. The uh, first uh, thing he said was, "Get us, we dig back the flag, take the back flag, the flag." We have, uh, and all this crap. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's there's no time for those who flinch at the flag. <laughs> Do you know what I loved? I was reading. I was reading a wee bit about this morning about it, and they said. Uh, seventeen percent. Only seventeen percent of people in Scotland respect the Union Jack, and <laughs> or only seventeen percent identify it. So uh, that has some union in it. You know, uh, the, the, you see, uh, he, uh, to, to be fair to the, to Starmer, it's a political move. He's afraid that yeah. uh, he'll be seen as being too lefty. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know why you should worry about that. I wouldn't if I was no. doing the things he's doing and saying the things he's saying. But it's he's fearful that he will be outflanked and that the um, uh, Tories will be able to say, we're the guys that stand up for Britain. And he wants to be able to say, no, we're the guys. Look, look, we showed the flag, we waved the flag. And do you remember Boris Johnson and that bloody tripwire? What have they got in each yeah. hand? Uh, 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 
Union flag. And of course, Trump was the same thing, like make America great again and stars and stripes forever. Uh, I sort of despise these guys. And the reason I despise them is that they think people are thick. They think uh, yeah. they're really stupid. It's the old thing, wrap the green flag around me, boys. Oh, I'm a great bloody yeah. patriot. And don't ask yeah. about my policies. Don't ask about how I led. Don't ask me about the people I kicked out of the party. Just look at the way I'm standing by our flag. And everybody will jump up and get excited. Incidentally, the thought just crosses my mind, Pat. Um, one of the things that people were asked about in the um, circumstances of a united Ireland, people in the South were asked, would they be prepared to change the flag? And many of them said no. Um, would you? Well, fair enough, too. But it depends on what the alternative was. The well, was say, say you were trying to say in unionists in the in the talks were pressing for a change in flag, not the Union Jack, but not the tricolor either. Uh, some other kind of flag well, that would give yeah. some some. Oh, hey, hey, no, here's I'll answer it a different way. Yeah, I would be open to cha change if what they were coming up with was better. Jude, I wouldn't change it just for the sake of changes to keep somebody happy. No, the other thing as well, Jude, I genuinely think. I have a long held view, and I know you're going to laugh at this. But I always think that uh, seeing the United Ireland, we should know, know not the words, but know the, the tune Danny Boy. Uh, you know, yeah, I always yeah. thought Danny Danny Boy uh, was a sort of a perfect thing. It was what uh, uh, it was played by Blaine Woolley McCurry. It was uh, the musical notation was uh, written down in Lamavati by a woman called Jane Ross. Uh, but that uh, was and, the London Dairy Air. And then I will then what I, I can't uh, what do you call the Freddie Fred whatever his name was uh, wrote the words and it's clearly a then it becomes a Catholic song Danny boy mm. say an Navi well an Navi is a, a Hail Mary yeah. say an Navi there for me so it encompasses all the traditions and all the cultures of Ireland and one song and I always thought it would be a perfect song well for, it, for, it, for it is a good song. I'd be I'd be willing to change that from a the vein. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very nice tune. In fact, it's a nicer tune than our own vein, I think. But unfortunately, for me, it's sullied because uh, it was forever paraded as being the alternative to our own vein. Uh, long years ago, uh, and I'm thinking about here, Barry McGuigan, he, when he uh, was yeah, going to the ring, yeah, yeah. you know, he, he was the essentially the boxing Rory McElroy of today. You know, <laughs> he wanted to have a foot in both camps, and yeah. he, you know, they, they they sang Danny Boy, and everybody's supposed to get weepy eyed, and all we're all friends together here. I I I take a, a lot. I need to get that washed out of my memory first. Uh, yeah. but I do agree with you. That's about. It. I actually, I suspect, Pat, that you would be keener, as many of the people in the South would be keener, on holding on to the present flag and the present anthem than I would. Um, I'm not saying I, I would rather, wouldn't rather have it the way it is, but I would, yeah. wouldn't, bother, wouldn't bother me. A flag is only a flag. As John no, Hughes no, said, you no, can't see, no, a flag. No, but somebody comes, somebody comes along and sticks something no on a tricolor, maybe like a a, a main, uh, no, like uh, no, the Australian uh, flag with half a Union Jack stuck in the middle of. I'm Aye. saying bollocks that. I'm not agreeing to that. You know, uh, but. <laughs> but you don't know we corner, absolutely. we corner Pat with a Union flag. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, no, you, like I, I think um, uh, the green, white, and gold uh, as symbol. And what was it? Thomas Francis Maher came up with that. The green for the nationalists, the white for oh, the oh, yeah, peace, yeah. and the orange for the uh, uh, the gold for the orange, but and peace between them. Uh -huh. I still think it, symbolically that is an acceptable flag to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I must say though, you you mentioned you said, and we used to say green, white, and gold uh, rather than green, white, and orange, uh, and that I think betrays on our part a reluctance to think of orangeism as being a part of the national identity. It is whether yeah. we like it or not. So I, I think I'd go Absolutely. along with that. It wouldn't bother me at all. I, I, I'm actually totally, not totally, very nearly agnostic, as they say, about flags, uh, the Irish national flag and the Irish national anthem. I think we could replace it with something equally good or even better, as you say. Uh, yeah, well, that's music. my point. I, I'm, I'm not going to agree to change something just for the sake of, but I, I, if somebody can come up with something better, I'm, I'm open-minded on it.
Yeah, yeah, but you wouldn't go for the you wouldn't go for the wee the wee Union Jack in the corner. I, no, no, that no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, you're a man of principle, I can say, Pat. Okay, let's move on. Um, uh, I'm just trying to. Yeah, okay, let's go with this one. Uh, it's uh, it was a subject of debate in the Kitty Hannon show. I don't know if you ever watched that up front with Kitty no, Hannon. I don't watch it. It's worth watching, Pat. I'm telling you now. Get your priorities in, in order. And they were talking about Catholic education and the, whether it should be in the schools or whether it should be taken out of the schools. Uh, now, the INTO, that's the Association of National, Teacher, National, National Teachers of Ireland. Uh, Irish National Teachers Organization. Organization. There yeah, you've got it. Well done. Well done. Uh, they said they wanted it removed. Uh, I, they did, I, the report doesn't say why they said it. But I suspect it's because people are teachers who are not Catholic. They're not practicing Catholic or they're not anything, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe they're, who knows, it could be Muslim, or it could be Protestant or whatever. Yeah. They're not, they feel there's something hypocritical about being forced to teach the Catholic faith to kids, uh, which is, to my mind, is eminently reasonable. And I know examples of exactly that. There's more and more teachers in Irish schools who don't subscribe to the Catholic Church and yet are being forced to, uh, because of their job, to teach the Catholic faith to the kids. Um, right. On the other hand, uh, the the parents, when they were asked, 78% of them said they wanted uh, the um, Catholic faith to be taught in the school. Uh, so uh, who, who do you go with? Are the teachers or the parents? There's a very famous uh, uh, episode of Only Fools and Horses, where uh, <laughs> Del Boy wants to get his son into uh, Damien, uh, as the child is called, into Catholic education. And he lays through his teeth about going to Mass and all the rest of it. No, he hasn't a clue about Catholicism mm. and all that sort of stuff. And apparently in France and places like that, and, uh, a lot of Muslims, uh, rather than send their kids to state schools, want to send them to Catholic schools because of the what he, what, the whole uh, ethos of the schools and the, the, the uh, academic achievement and so on. Jude, uh, uh, I think you said, what is it, 78% of the people are happy with Catholic education? Uh, yeah, it's very simple. Uh, here's the thing. I would think most teachers, even, like a lot of young people today, Jude, are simply, you know, the days have gone, or mm -hmm. we can take it for granted, you know, a lot of them are either A, Agnostic or be atheists, and uh, you know the days of sort of um, what is, uh, um, sort of strictures of the Catholic Church applying are gone. But the other side of the story, Jude, if I take a job as a teacher in a Catholic school, my first priority, I'm a professional, and my job is to a paid job is to teach the curriculum. If part of that curriculum is teaching the teaching of the Catholic Church, I think I should be able to do it as a professional job and say this is what the Catholic Church says, and I think uh, you know uh, the onus is on me to deliver that. Uh, for for which I'm getting paid, mm. I don't think yeah, anybody yeah. should have a big uh, have a big issue with that. There were guys who worked for the Sun newspaper who detested everything that that paper stood for, but they, they said as long as they were getting paid, that was their job, etc., etc., etc. And I, I would think if uh, if you can work for the Sun and you know just because that was your job, I'm sure you could do much the same as a teacher in a Catholic school. If you take the job on, if you take if you're willing to take up employment in a Catholic school. That's the terms and conditions that go with the job. Yeah, well, I, I agree. I agree. And that's what's happening at present. But I worry about it because I do think that the, uh, teaching religion is a bit different. If yeah, you yourself really. don't believe in what you're teaching, uh, yeah. there's something not quite right. If I thought teaching English or I thought the English literature, say, was rubbish, and yet I had to teach mm -hmm. it, uh, I think I, I'd feel uneasy about that. Somebody said, and I think it may be in the same article, they said, it's a bit like asking in a, in a, um, a school Gilliga, an, all, uh, an Irish medium school, of confining yeah. the teaching through Irish to one class uh, yeah. and the, the rest. Of, it has to permeate the whole school to work. And that's we see that again and again, that that's what makes it work. Everybody speaks Irish all the time in everything. Uh, and I think the, the Catholic Church has got a point that ideally that's the way it should be done. I, I, yeah. To be honest, I'd nearly be in favour of saying remove it, except, except, A, the parents clearly want it. They want yeah. it for one reason or another. They want Catholic education. And the second thing yeah. is this, in the North here anyway, 
uh, it's the Catholic schools, this is the grammar schools now, occupy the top five slots, I think, of yeah. uh, academic achievement. They are doing mm. wonderfully well in uh, academic terms. Mm. So I'm fearful yeah. that if you pulled out something, uh, change something, that you might change the whole machinery and it mightn't function as well as it's doing. It's a very complex yeah. problem. Um, Absolutely. I, I know well, you, you have had more more experience of it than I have because I'm not a teacher. You were, uh, uh, and I, I like I, I've not, I didn't really have much of an experience. Well, my kids went to school in the north, of course, but I didn't go to school in the north. Uh, but the the whole thing, uh, I went to, right. I went to national school, Presentation Brothers. Then I went to secondary school, which was a uh, Saint Junan's, which is a Catholic run school, and well, well, in, in later life, I went off to uh, University of Ulster, but that was a much later in life. But here's the thing, dude. The whole ethos, my whole childhood was slanted by the Catholic Church. Now, dude, they did provide a very good education system. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about that. Mm -hmm. And you look at this uh, at the the South today, uh, the introduction of free, a free education in 1967, and most of that would have been run by the Catholic Church, uh, has um, you know, brought this country way, way forward. Like, uh, you know, uh, dude, the, I used to sit and watch um, what do you call it? four million people buying the sun in Britain. You know, you, you simply wouldn't get that here because it was stood up that people are better educated. Uh, uh, and you know, not to, not to say that whatever, but uh, there's a whole different ethos in the south. Uh, most people have at least secondary education in the in the republic. Uh, I, that's that's right. I, that is an amazing turnaround, you know, because I yeah. remember back in the day when I was at UCD. I, either overtly or covertly, us guys from the north, likes of Jimmy Shargate and myself, uh, were we we thought, and it seemed obvious to us that we had been better educated, say in writing, uh, or yeah. ways to approach some issue in um, in in our subjects than many yeah. of the people who are from the south. Not all of them, mind you. There's some very select yeah. schools. But uh, we did think we were better. It certainly has flipped now. There's no doubt about it yeah. that the teaching in the South, education in the South is, is working out far better. And the fact that you're getting these foreign direct investment places coming in, that's part of the reason that you have these intelligent young people who are sticking around rather than as in the old days, uh, they would clear off. Um, but the last thing I'll say is this, in the North, of course, we have got Catholic schools and Protestant schools. Now, Protestants bridle when you say that. They say, no, no, this is a state school you're talking about, open to anybody. Well, that's yeah. true. But so, is, so, is, so are the Catholic schools. As far as I know, I don't think anybody has refused any kids entry to the Catholic uh, school system, even though they weren't Catholic themselves. Um, yeah. But uh, the... the um, um, Oh, I've forgotten the bloody point I was going to make now, but oh yes, the the ethos. Yeah, this is the ethos. Uh, I I only noticed this in later years. When you go into a school, in a Catholic school, it'll take you no time at all finding out that it is a Catholic school. Apart from the fact that yeah. you know already, there'll be crucifixes maybe on a wall, or there'll be uh, a May altar, or there'll be something, yeah. all sorts of signs, a sign in Irish or whatever. In a Protestant school, in many cases. Uh, first thing it'll strike you is a list, certainly in the grammar schools, you'll have a roll of the honoured dead from the Great War, yes. those people who had served their yeah, yeah. country in the wars. And uh, in all sorts of other little ways, uh, it was clear that it was a unionist Protestant school, uh, well, unionist school rather than a Protestant school. Um, yeah. And I, that, that does have an effect, I think, being surrounded by that all day. It's essentially made to produce, as Catholic schools are made to produce good little Catholics, and uh, so Protestant schools are made to produce good little Unionists, I think, rather than yeah. good little Protestants. Um, Do you follow on your point? I was up in one of the schools up in the Craigan uh, there last year, the year before. The yeah. head guy, the head boy, sorry, is actually a Muslim. Oh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, a lovely fellow he was too, by the way. Uh, but it, it um. And so, like that's that's how things have moved on. I uh, yes, that's I always I don't know why I feel so cheerful whenever I hear that kind of thing. I, uh, I feel the same thing when I see guys talking with a broad northern accent and who are brown or black or your uh, Chinese or whatever. There's something exhilarating about that. I suppose it's a compliment to Ireland that these people want to come yeah. here and become integrated. Um, yeah, I, I remember in Canada 
I once made the mistake um, when I arrived. Uh, I was with a group of Canadians, and one of them said to me, "Well, so how long are you are you, are you staying here permanently?" And, uh, I said, "No, no, just two years." <laughs> Jeez. I just suddenly realized what I'd said, and I could tell that didn't really go down all that well. In other words, yeah. I was saying, I don't particularly admire your country. I'm coming to get a bit of money. I want to clear off. <laughs> get the hell out of here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> bad move, yeah. Jude, bad move. I still remember it well. <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, let's go to, this is a touchy one now. Um, um, this is written by Brida O'Brien. Uh, now, she's yeah. a... It would be fair to say, I think she's the Catholic commentator in the Irish Times. She writes a column. Yeah. And her heading of this is, Did No Alarm Bells Tinkle from RTE's Editorial Structure About Its Programs on Abortion Services? And she zeroes in on a broadcast that was made uh, about um, abortion and the availability of abortion in the South in the light of the, the legislation. And she argues that there, there, should, there wasn't a single contribution from anybody who was pro-choice or for pro-life, uh, pro-life or pro-choice for that matter. There was nobody who expressed doubts about the wisdom of expanding the Irish abortion services so that they could access it at a later stage in their pregnancy. Um, they, she just felt that it was presenting abortion as a good and uh, that her side of the argument and the side of many other people, I suppose, wasn't being heard. Well, I know you probably haven't seen the thing and I haven't seen it either, but oh. what do you hear there in that report of Brito O'Brien? What are your thoughts, Pat? Do you think there's um, a pressure to people to broaden um, uh, access to ab abortion, uh, under-representation of those who don't agree with abortion? Jude, I, um, I keep making the same point over and over. Uh, I used to do uh, every, well, not every Friday morning, but regularly on a Friday morning, we used to do this uh, review of the week on Highland Radio. Yeah. Uh, there was a presenter, was Sean Doherty, there was myself and usually somebody else, you know, uh, I'd be on every second or third week. And you'd see if the program was flagging, say, you know, you just weren't getting a lot of sort of feedback. I give you a non-equivocal guarantee, mention abortion. And the lights on the switchboard, you could see them sort of going, and the, the phones would come in, and the producer would be coming on with reams of paper about people saying, you get them people off the air, and whatever, whatever. Yeah. Here's the thing, Jude. Uh, uh, Brito, is it Brito Brain? Is that her name? That's Brito her name, Brito. yeah. Uh, yeah, but it, she definitely has a, a very much a Catholic, Irish, uh, right-wing, old-style agenda, and she's totally uh, anti-abortion and all the rest of it. But, Jude, here's the point. So am I, and I think so are you. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's where we go for all this. Now, as, as far as I'm, I'm aware, RT has said that, that they weren't promoting it. They were looking at the, they were reviewing uh, the legislation that was introduced last year and how it works in practice and so on. And they said, uh, I think they're saying that basically they followed all broadcasting gu guidelines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And like, I think they were basically saying, look, you're entitled to your opinion, but we mm -hmm. did the program within our own after much editorializing and so on. But the bottom line, Jude, it's always going to be controversial. And I, by the way, I wouldn't, I am not here to bat for abortion services and I'm not here to support it. So Jude, I, I, the, where I stop is I am not a woman and if I was raped and I got pregnant I don't know what I would do so I see this abortion thing I try to sit on this fence as much as possible because mm -hmm. while I am anti-abortion I am not a woman and I don't have the consequences well uh, that's very humane it's very typical of you Pat I must say now you're very you have an ability to put yourself in other people's shoes and ask questions about it I, as you know, am much more austere and uh, tend to uh, just uh, uh, say things only from my own narrow thinking. And mm. I, here's what I believe. I believe that abortion services, which are now confined, I think, to up to six weeks, is it? Up to six weeks? Yeah, yeah something like uh, uh, I think, that. Can be I, think 12 weeks, I think 12 weeks is too long, I think. But uh, it could be 12 weeks, I'm not certain. Maybe it's 12, maybe it's 12, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm convinced that that will be extended over, say, the next five years. I'm convinced that that'll be extended to um, 15 weeks, 20 weeks, even 24 weeks. 
I think once yeah. the abortion services are you once you can see the fact that to have an abortion is an okay thing and it's women's health and so on, then I think it's inevitable that people will say, well, what about me? I just because I don't I'm part of this narrow little early pregnancy stage. Why are you not showing compassion for me? Uh, which pushes me to to uh, become almost right wing. Well, you used the word right wing. I'm not sure yeah. that I would call Brady O'Brien right wing. No, I'm Brady not sure I would call her right wing. Very Catholic. Very Catholic. Yeah, Catholic, uh, yeah. And well, she's maybe there I'm so unfair on my part. I'll withdraw uh, that. I, uh, and I wouldn't consider you right wing either. Uh, and both of us would rather not have abortion. I'm 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 feeling myself in danger of coming down and saying no abortion at all. Um, and I know that's not popular and I know it would provide hardship for people. But, you know, if you concede that what's inside the woman is a human being, I mean, there's nobody's hardship like the person whose life is taken from them. You know, I know Jude, I, if that's the case. If anybody could come out, uh, Jude, if anybody could come out, come out with a solution or a resolution whereby all those uh, those things that you're saying, uh, uh, I'd be, there's no, I think most of us would be over the moon. But right, Jude, uh, if somebody's raped and they end up uh, pregnant, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever, whatever, you know, say, and say you have a 13 year old daughter and, mm. and she's pregnant and she's mm. going to say she's going to commit suicide. And you, you have no doubt that she's going to do that, that, that someone will have. No, Who's going to say to the father or the or the mother in a situation like that? Oh no, no abortion. You know, like, uh, Jim, uh, I just don't know. I really yeah, well, don't. No, Jim, yeah. that's not to say I I Jim, I really I have refused to vote for abortion in the past, and I I won't vote for it in the future either. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I, uh, I I I crossed the sort of Rubicon and said I, I would hate to be in uh, in the uh, shoes of somebody in, in those circumstances i think the circumstance I, I would agree with you on that point uh I, I, that's the one circumstances where i would say if support abortion and that is if it's a choice between the mother's life and the life of the child or the the embryo yeah. and definitely i would yeah. I choose as a life of the mother even that meant the termination of the pregnancy uh anyway uh we've only a couple of minutes pat only two minutes i want to could we squeeze it in because it's a really grabbing headline former british spy an IRA who allegedly admitted murder will not be prosecuted. Did you read that article, Pat? Or yeah, that... I did it. Yeah, yeah, I did it. Does that come uh, as a Kevin shock Wonder, to you? Uh, Are you Wonder shocked is... and saddened? Is this a new no, world? Jude, I'm not shocked and saddened. <laughs> See, the lies, the you know, double standards of the Brits over the years, nothing surprises me. Did I hear it all this years ago? And I remember being told I was an IRA dupe and I was, you know, I'd been a victim of IRA propaganda. Because the, the only bad guys were the uh, the IRA. Jude, I remember being told stories of double agents about murders and about you know uh, cops, I, I, you know telling lies and and yeah. and ju uh, judges giving verdicts that were the evidence didn't match. And uh, you, Pat, you, you've just fallen victim for Martin McGinnis and all this. Sort of. And besides, you're besides you're you're editing a paper that's more like on Fublocked than the Daily Journal. Uh, exactly, uh, exactly. I, I was told all this crap. Jude, and we knew it all because there was so much evidence at the, the back then to back it up. Jude, it's coming out now, every which way, the state is as corrupt as the people they were condemning, allegedly. Well, they, they, they are closing, this legacy bill is closing down very, very soon, as we are, because yeah. we've only about 30 seconds left. And it's just simply going to stop any further cases being brought. That's outrageous. That's really outrageous. Absolutely. Especially mm -hmm. since all of the parties, including including unionist parties, have said keep this uh, opportunity to prosecute people who've committed uh, crimes of murder, in short. Okay, Pat, that's a sad note to end on, but still, it's spring. The sun is coming out. The birds are bright, And you're just raring to get out at your lawn, aren't you? Absolutely. On that uh, note... Me too. I'm going out to mine now. Right, Pat. Bye, Jude. Oh,